Hello, beautiful one. Carefully look at this beautiful exponential equation. It's easy, right? Yes. And I'm going to take you through it step by step. And don't forget to tell us how it helps you in the comment. We always want to serve you best. Now, to solve this, we're going to begin with solution. So let's repeat what we have. 8 to the power of x plus 4 to the power of x is equal to 36. Now, what should we do? We can choose to express this 4 and 2 to a common base. We know too well that 4 is 2 times 2, which is 2 to the power of 2. And 8 is also 2 times 2 times 2, which is 2 to the power of 3. So to simplify this, we are going to have 2 to the power of 3 for 8 is raised to the power of x plus for 4. 2 to the power of 2 is raised to the power of x is equal to 36. Interesting. What do you think we should do next? We also know to where for every a to the power of n raised to power n, it is a to the power of n n, which is the same as this. Okay? These are all the same. Now we can apply it at the left side. To do that, we are going to have 2 to the power of, we can switch the paths, just observe this. So it's going to give us 2 to the power of x, now raised to the power of 3 plus. For this, we can have 2 to the power of x raised to the power of 2 is equal to 36. Interesting. Did you observe anything? Yes. You see that what we have in the brackets are the same. So I can choose to replace with any variable. So I can say let 2 to the power of x be a variable. Let me say y. So substituting this value of y in this equation, we are going to have y will be raised to the power of 3 plus here we're going to have y squared is equal to 36. Beautiful. Now what do we do? Observe carefully that this has led us to a cubic equation. You see that the highest power of y is 3. Now, and this one is y squared. We ask ourselves question, is there any number, the same number we can get from this, that when we raise it to the power of 3, and also raise the same number to the power of 2, that is finding the q and e squared sums together, can it give us 36? Let's see to that. Let's check from when we have, let's say y is 2. So we are going to have 2 cubed plus 2 squared. Let's see what it gives us. 2 cubed is 2 multiplied 3 times. And that will give us 8. And this is 2 multiplied 2 times to give us 4. You see that adding these 2 is not equal to 36. So it means this is not helpful to us. Now I'm going to also check y as 3. So we have y as 3. We are going to have, so we are going to have y as 3. We have 3 cubed plus 3 squared. Did you see anything? 3 cubed is 3 multiplied 3 times. We give us 27. And 3 squared is 3 multiplied 2 times to give us 9. And when you add this, it gives you 36. So it means that we are going to replace this 36 with this value to help us to solve. And to do that, we are going to have, we have it that 36 is the same as 3 cubed add 3 squared. So to simplify that, we are going to now have y cubed plus y squared is equal to, instead of writing this, I have 3 cubed plus 3 squared. Beautiful. Now, what do you do next? You're going to take these values to the left side. Remember, this is positive. So if you do that, we are going to have y cubed. This will be negative 3 cubed, then plus y squared minus 3 cubed. Everything is equal to zero. Now, when you get to this point, remember, that for every a cubed minus b cubed, it is a minus b into a squared plus ab plus b squared. And for every a squared minus b squared, it is a plus b into a minus b. This is our difference of two cubes, and this is difference of two squares. This formula are going to be a guide 
to solving this. And to do that, also know that for you to have watch through this point, it shows what you are doing interesting. Don't forget to hit that subscription button. If you are still new to this channel, we have a lot to give to you. Give this a thumbs up, share with your friends, and also let us know how it helps you or what you feel about this class in the comment section. We always want to serve you best. Let's continue. Thank you. To do that, we have obeying this. This is going to these two and these two are together. Okay. So obeying this on this, we are going to have y minus 3 into y squared. Okay. Plus this is our A as you know, this is B. So it's going to be y multiplied by 3 plus 3 squared. Then bring down this plus sign. For this, we are going to apply this. And it's giving us y plus 3 into y minus 3. Interesting. And everything is equal to 0. Did you observe anything? You observe that. Remember, these two are together. These two are together. You observe that y minus 3 is repeated in the two parts. So we're going to factor it out. To do that, we have y minus 3, bring it out, open a book bracket, use this to divide these two, okay? And when you use this on these two, you are left with y squared plus, multiply this, it gives you 3y. Three, 3 squared is 3 times 3, which will give us 9. Bring down your addition sign. Now use this to divide these two. You see this will take off this and we are left with y plus 3, everything is equal to 0. Keep solving, we have y minus 3 into y squared plus 3y plus y will give us 4y and 9 plus 3 will give us 12. Everything is equal to 0. Now keep solving, we have. Remember that for every a, b to be equal to 0, is either that a is 0 or b is equal to 0. So when you have this two to be equal to zero, it means that y minus three is equal to zero. Let's solve this first, okay? So we're going to add three to both sides. If you do that, y will give us, this is gone. So if you add, you have three. So the first value of y is three. So this is the first value of y. Now we're going to also check for the second value of y, and that is y squared plus four y plus 12 is equal to zero. Now we are going to, because we are targeting real value for X, we are going to check for the discriminant of this particular equation. Remember, this is your quadratic equation. Let's check if this is real or complex. And to do that, remember that your discriminant is always equal to B squared minus 4AC. If this gives us a value that is greater than zero, it means it is real. And if it is less than zero, it means it is complex and we are going to reject it. Now, to do this, our A is always, remember, this is what we are using to test. Our A is the quotient of y squared, which is one. Our B is the quotient of y, which is four. And our C is 12. Plugging this into this statement we have, D is equal to 4 squared minus 4 multiplied by A is 1 multiplied by our C is 12. Simplifying, we have D is 4 squared is 4 times 4, 16. And when you multiply this, it gives us negative 48. Now, when you subtract this, it means that our D is equal to negative 32. And from what we stated there, I say that negative 32 is a number that is less than zero. And if it is less than zero, it means that this is complex. And because it's complex, we are going to reject this value. So we are rejecting this y for this. And that case, we are going to only make use of this because it gives us a real value. So simplifying this, we have to remember we made a statement earlier. So we recall that 2 to the power of x is said to be equal to y. So since our y is 3, we are going to have, so let's take it to this part. So this gives us 2 to the power of x. Remember our y is 3, so we have 3. Now, 
just know that when you get to this point, you need to take log rhythm on both sides. So we're going to have log of 2 to the power of x is equal to log of 3. Now remember, for every log of a to the power of x, it's always equal to x log a. This power will always multiply the log. So this is going to be our guide. Applying it on the left side, we have this we multiply. So we have x log 2 is equal to log 3. Now what do you do? Remember, we are to get this log, this x. So to do that, we clear log 2. To clear it, you divide both sides. Divide both sides by log 2. When you do that, x is going to give us log of 3 divided by log of 2. Now remember, each time you have log of a divided by log of b, it is always equal to log of a base b. This is going to be our guide. Applying it here, we are going to have x is equal to log of 3, then this becomes the base. Now this gives us the value of x. Beautiful. We are going to plot this value of x at the left side of this equation to see if it gives us 36. And that is the most interesting part I wouldn't want you to miss. Let's do this verification together to have. To verify, we now have 8. Instead of x, we replace with this. So we have log of 3 base 2 plus 4 to the power of log of 3 base 2. Is this going to be equal to 26? Now, what do you do? Remember, we stated earlier, 8 is the same as 2 to the power of 3 is raised to the power of log of 3 base 2 plus for this it is 2 to the power of 2 to the power of log of 3 base 2. Now remember we stated earlier when you have this it is also equal to a to the power of n multiplied by n. So in that case this powers we multiply for us to remove the brackets. So if you do that we are going to have 2 to the power of 3 log 3 base 2 plus 2 to the power of, this we multiply, so we have 2 log 3 base 2. Also remember we said that the coefficient of the log is always the power of that log within. Did you see? So this 2 is going to be the power of the log. Now simplifying this, we have 2 to the power of log of 3. This 3 will be raised to the power, okay? Then base 2 plus 2 to the power of, this becomes the power, so we have log of 3 squared base 2. At this point, remember this rule. For every a to the power of log of b base a, this base and the general base are the same. It's always equal to the number b. This is going to guide us. Now applying it here, you also observe that this and this are the same. Likewise, this. Is going to give us 3 to the power of 3 plus for this we have 3 squared and 3 cubed is 3 multiplied 3 times to give us 27 and this is 3 multiplied 2 times to give us 9 and when you add this it gives you back 36 which is what we have at the right side and it means that the value of x as log of 3 base 2 is absolutely correct. And I hope you learned something today. Don't forget to tell us how much. Share this. Give this a like. And if you are still new, subscribe for we have a lot to give to you. Thank you for always engaging and your contributions. I appreciate and love you all. See you in our next class. Bye-bye.